Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. I hope you're all having a great day today. And thank you for joining me as we take a look at yet another affordable guitar from the new brand of guitars from Amazon, which is Latitude Guitars. Now this is the second video that we're doing on Latitude Guitars. On the first video, we took a look at their single cut model, which is the NW1915. And in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at this beautiful semi-hollow guitar which the model name I believe is the SE1819. And if I'm mistaken, I'll put the correct model name on the screen, but we're gonna look at it in greater detail, go over some of the tones, go over some of these specifications, and uh, maybe talk a little bit more about the brand and some of my experiences with them. So without further ado, let's see what the Latitude SE1819 is all about. So you heard a little lead segment on what the guitar sounds like. So what I'd like to do now is go over some of the specifications per the Amazon listing and um, also go into greater detail about some of the features, maybe get into a little bit more technical and geeky stuff. And then after that, we'll do some additional playing examples. We'll do clean tones, we'll do distorted tones. And finally, I will conclude the video with my thoughts on the guitar and whether I believe it's a good buy for the money or not. Um, so starting with the specifications as per the Amazon listing, we'll start with the body. There's a little bit of conflicting information there because there are parts of the Amazon listing that say the back of the body is mahogany and the top is roasted mahogany. But then if you scroll slightly down, there's another segment that says it's roasted maple. I believe that the body in its entirety is roasted maple but I don't have confirmation of that uh, as of now. If I do, by the time I upload the video, I'll either post it in the comments or edit it into the video. Um, aside from the wood of the body, which like I said, I believe is roasted maple, we have two PAF vintage boy style humbuckers, and we have two tones, two volume, a three-way position selector switch. We've got a two nomadic bridge with roller saddles, similar to what we saw on the single cut and I will say the entire guitar outside of the headstock is fully bound and what that means is that it has a binding on the top, on the sides and back, on the F holes and on the neck and speaking of the neck we have an Indian rosewood fretboard with 22 medium jumbo stainless steel frets that are very nicely rounded. I'll put a uh, close-up of that on the uh, screen and these are hand polished as per the website description. And then as we move up to, um, across the uh, fretboard, we'll see that it has a bone nut. And on the Latitude headstock, which kind of looks like a trident, I don't mind it. On the back, we're gonna see these Grover style tuners by Latitude, which are 18 to one ratio tuners. And I think I've covered all of my bases. The other thing is it has these trapezoid inlays, which are very conventional. All right, so I'd like to put the guitar on the table and maybe take a look at some of the um, more specific or geekier stuff, take some measurements, and then after we do that, I'd like to do some clean and distorted playing examples for you so you can see what the guitar sounds like, and then we'll close the video with my final thoughts. So let's go ahead and do that now. <music> Hey guys, um, so I had a whole segment that I recorded with some borrowed tools and for some reason I lost that footage and I don't have some of those tools anymore. Basically I was going over the guitar in greater detail so I wanted to share that with you guys um, and I won't be able to do that. However, I have some tools that I can use right now just to give you an idea of what some of my discoveries were and then there's some information that I remember so I'll just share that flat out with you. Um, so first off, we'll start with the caliper. So I had, let me make sure it's uh, on. 
So I had discovered that it is indeed a compound neck as the description states. So what you're gonna see, it should be 42.7 millimeters. Yep, uh, right there, the first fret and the nut. But then when you go down here, let's just do, let's just do the 15th fret. Actually, let's see, yeah, no, 15 is fine. When you go to the 15th fret, you're gonna see it's 54.7. So quite, uh, not quite as narrow <laughs> so it, it basically flattens out and, and opens up as you go down the neck um, the other thing is i have a contour tool it's an old one and um, maybe not the greatest representation but just to give you an idea of what it looks like so let me make sure this is straight um, so here's what that neck shape looks like on the first fret i'm going to try to do this like so okay so as you can see, very narrow. Now keep in mind, this might look a little bit more narrow than it actually is, but it just gives you an idea of how it changes from the first fret right here, which I feel like I screwed up now. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So first fret and then check out 15th fret. Look how much wider that is on the 15th fret. When you put it here, you have like an entire inch of wiggle room there. Um, so yeah, so hopefully that helps. Um, some of the other things I discovered uh, was the uh, pickup. So the output I measured the bridge is actually surprisingly hot at 9.1 uh, DC resistance and then the neck was 7.4. I don't know if that's consistent, um, but it doesn't surprise me because when I tried out the guitar and as you will see in some of the sound samples, um, it, it was quite a bit more output than I would expect from this type of instrument. Um, I guess the other thing that I would like to do, which I'll include in the sound samples is um, put the lavalier microphones that I'm using on the F holes so that you get an idea of what the acoustic properties for the instrument are. Um, probably not the best representation, but just to give you a general idea of what that looks like. And then I'll share some photos with some information about some of the other things that I uh, uncovered. Um, going back to the measurements thing, I, I do want to call out, so the guitar in length from the bottom of the guitar to the top of the headstock was 42 inches. Um, the whiteness of the body was 17 inches, if I remember correctly. If I have that wrong, I'll put it on screen now. And then the thickness of the body was two inches. So that gives you an idea of what the measurements are. Now keep in mind, it is an arch body, so it, it's slightly arched as you go down the center. Um, and it's a little bit more difficult to kind of measure that center area, but I imagine it's not even half an inch um, thicker. So just gives you an idea of what the size of the guitar is. Um, so hopefully this helps in any way. I promise for next video, we'll do a more deep dive like I did uh, originally before I lost the footage. So um, let's do some sound samples now. We'll look at some clean tones, dirty tones, and what the guitar sounds like uh, unplugged, and then we'll go from there. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
specifications and measurements and did the playing examples for clean tones, distorted tones and all of that. So I just want to give you my final thoughts and wrap this video up. Um, first and foremost, overall, I'm very impressed uh, with what Tom from formerly of Earth, but now of Latitude Guitars has been able to do in a relatively short amount of time. Uh, yes, there's only two models right now. There's a third one that's already made i think it should be up for sale in the next couple of days or weeks at the most um, which is a uh, headless looks really cool and there's other models that are um, coming very soon but uh, what i want to say is um, both guitars that i've reviewed um, there's a couple things i'd notice um, number one as i called out the original batch had some issues but what i saw from tom in our interactions and we had video calls and we went over it in detail, I even spoke to his wife. It was a, a very fun experience, and I know he did the same with uh, many other, um, you know, customers for, from Latitude Guitars. Um, what I learned is that uh, he does have a genuine interest in ensuring that we get a quality product for not a lot of money, um, and that's just an honest assessment from what I could gather from our conversations. Um, I went over some of like the finish flaws that I encounter or the setup issues, etc. Again, this is first batch that doesn't exist anymore. You're not going to get any of that. Um, and they really went to town in ensuring that these were quality instruments. Anyone that had any issues were, you know, had those issues resolved. And now anyone that's buying any of these guitars or getting any of these are just raving about them and with good reason. Um, because they are very high value and just like the Earth guitars, they have these nicely rounded stainless steel frets that uh, really improve your overall playing experience but then there's also the intelligent design in this neck where you get a more rounder and and narrower neck shape up here for your making your chords easier but you get a kind of like a um more flatter and wider neck shape here uh which makes it easier for playing your lead tone so that's great. Um, the components that come in this guitar, even though it's a 300 something dollar guitar, are pretty good quality. I'm impressed by the tuners. I would say they're very, very good. I don't see any reason why you would want to change them. I understand some people prefer locking tuners, and if that's you, that's perfectly fine. But uh, I will say the stock ones work just fine. Really impressed with the, pick the pickups. <laughs> they sound great. Um, they're very versatile. I was kind of impressed by how they handled high gain as well. I know this is not a guitar that you are interested in getting for playing high gain, 
but i um, kind of impressed that it was able to do that. And overall, I found them to be very versatile. So when you read something like vintage PAF, you expect a certain kind of sound. And, and while this can do that, I think it's able to offer you so much more. Um, the roller saddles are nice. My only grime, and this is with ro roller saddles in general, it's not um, specific to this bridge, is sometimes they can be noisy, they can rattle a little bit. I don't really get that much from this one, but just calling it out, uh, talking about my preferences. Finish work, I think, is, is done great on this. Uh, the color is nice. Um, the finishing, the binding, all of that stuff, really well done for a guitar and its price point. Um, it's nice to know that it has roasted wood, especially on the neck, because by drying the impurities of the wood and, um, and the humidity, it will prevent it from shifting when you have extreme temperature changes in the winter or summer, um, which just means for you that combine that with stainless steel rounded frets, uh, you shouldn't have to set this guitar as often as other guitars. My one maybe critique in the design of this guitar, and this is me, and I, I don't really see this being a, a major issue for 99% of people, I find that the cutaway here is a little narrow um, for my taste. I didn't measure it with the caliper or ruler, I should have. But um, what I find is when I get to the last frets, I can play them, but if I wanna twist my hand this way to maybe get to like the highest fret or do something a little more complex all the way down there, um, I'm a little restricted by the amount of space that's in there. I find the Ibanez um, has a more I guess a more open or, or thorough cutaway, which allows that access better. So if I was to suggest something to Tom, it would be to maybe make this a little bit wider so that us um, folks that have larger or fatter hands <laughs> don't struggle playing over here. Although again, realistically, this probably won't bother most people because I can't imagine anyone spending more than half a percent of their time playing over here, <laughs> this kind of guitar, right? Um, but uh, yeah, just calling that out, it's the only thing, other than that, great instrument for the money. Uh, when I think that an Epiphone costs twice as much and doesn't even give you some of the features that you get here, um, this is a no-brainer when it comes to a semi-hollow guitar. So I highly recommend it. Uh, you can't go wrong with one. Check them out. I'll put the link in Amazon. Um, and I think they have a website as well. So I'll put links for that. And that's it for the video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. And if you did, please leave me a like, comment, or subscribe. If you didn't, please leave me some um, criticism about what it is that you didn't like um, so that hopefully I can uh, make adjustments for the following videos. Um, that's it. This video has gone long enough, so I'm going to head out of here. You guys have a great rest of your day. Take care.